What's up guys? So episode two of Moon Knight just dropped. We finally got to see some, and I say some action because Moon Knight basically bodied the competition with ease. Mr. Knight, now that's a different story. Lots of people are mixed about his portrayal in the episode. And even before the show started, people were worried about his inclusion in the series, which we'll get into in a bit. We also got to see Mae Calamoy's Layla for the first time. Mark Spector gets his chance to shine, and we learn more about Harrow and what he's all about. Turns out he's a little too generous with the soul sucks. And, you know, we all know a person like that in our lives. But seriously, I really enjoyed this episode more than the first. So I'm going to go over my likes and dislikes. Talk about some of the interesting things I picked up on and fill you guys in. We'll talk about the whole Mr. Knight situation. And I'll make some predictions for the next episode and the rest of the series based on what we just saw. Also address a rumor that I've been hearing for a while now. But before we do any of that, make sure to support your boy by hitting that sub button, turning on your notifications, leaving a thumbs up follow my social medias like retweet all that good stuff remember players do not go vegan because once you do ethan hawk will summon a jackal to come and rock your shit okay just looking out now let's get into it so we start off with mark going back to work and realizing all of what just happened was real but also that nobody else could see it but him leading to his co-workers believing him to be crazy which he 100 is but that doesn't make any of what happened not real and so he was referred to a doctor which I have a feeling might lead to Dr. Emmett, who will actually be Amut and Landmark in that psych ward, similar to his time in the Lunatic Run by Jeff Lemire. Highly recommended. I also am really still loving the use of reflections and the whole giving up the name tag symbolizing Steven giving up his identity and letting Mark take control at the end of the episode. Steven then takes what he knows to be real to those storage units which were numbered, and guys, no number is truly random in the MCU, and it turns out the barcode from Mark's unit takes you to, I believe, a werewolf by night comic i forget the exact issue i'll put it up for sure though steven gets more confirmation that mark is real Kanchu is real and that the scarab is actually a compass leading to amit's tomb steven even big ups himself by calling mark handsome when he was talking to him and you know that's something we all could work on you know, the self-talk but of course steven doesn't want to believe it and takes off and we get this really badass and tension filled scene of Kanchu chasing after mark in the storage facility that looks straight out of a horror movie and i bet that security camera footage is going to be used to really put steven away when people see this man running away from nothing and that added to the already crazy looking security footage from the museum definitely this man is going away i also really wasn't expecting this freeze frame but honestly it really reminded me of spider-man 2 so it's kind of actually endearing to me so i really enjoyed that and this leads him directly to may calamaway's layla which i love that because of conchu and of course steven's mental health issues they kind of guide him on the right direction exactly where he needs to be like if it was almost intentional it seems Layla and him have a deeper history that will get explored as the series goes on and we actually find out they're married so here goes Stephen Grant this introvert down on his luck dopey kind of guy and this absolute baddie comes through saves your ass and then says she's your wife I mean personally I'm not the biggest fan of marriage but if that's my chick you know I'm eating those divorce papers whole and then well maybe some other eating would occur after that but this scene was really great because Mark wants this divorce to happen so Layla is safe from whatever's going on with Harrow's cult and also Kanshu who is looking for her to be his next avatar if Mark gives up. So this makes Mark's calling for divorce make sense, right? He just wants his wife to be safe. And then the cops come and take Steven away and look through his background and find some unsavory info on Mark Spector about killing a group of archaeologists that Mark insists isn't the case, which further drives Steven from believing anything that Mark says. And once the drive ends, it's revealed they are actually agents of Amut and in Harrow's cult. And so Harrow meets up, takes him through his little compound that he has where the people there are watching, you know, fine art. And so basically Harrow reveals that he used to be the avatar of Kanshu, And so he knows so many things about him. And he's making a case for Steven to stop serving Kanshu and to give up the scarab that'll lead to Amit's tomb. And so when Steven starts to press back about this whole issue, because honestly, this really reminds me this whole motivation motivation for Harrow's cult about you know weeding out evil from the very root it reminds me so much of like what happened in Loki like kind of an argument of predestiny and free will here but basically Steven pushes back because he's like what you're just gonna fucking you're gonna kill babies that are gonna do things that in the future that suck like you can't do that and Harrow's whole crew was about to press Steven until baddie Layla comes through flexing the scarab right in front of Harrow and his spot and saves Steven gets him out of there like a good wife should okay Layla 
Sheila is an amazing wife, okay? She comes through for her man when he needs her the most and uplifts him and gives him confidence like a good wife should. But once they get away from Harrow's crew, Harrow uses that cane to summon a jackal to hunt Steven down. And this is when we find out in the episode that jackals are in fact invisible. And that's awesome because again, that plays into making everything viable. Just because the jackals are invisible, it doesn't mean they aren't real. And others not seeing them lends to the crazy aspect of Mark Spector Moon Knight, which I really love. And Steven gets knocked out the window and falls to what would be his death until he finally summons the suit and Mr. Knight comes through piloted by Steven himself. And we get to see what Mr. Knight is all about or not so much about, okay? So people have been very mixed about Mr. Knight's portrayal because Moon Knight's been around since 1975 with his first real solo comic coming in 1980. And his first appearance as Mr. Knight came like 30 years later in Secret Avengers 19. And then in his own solo comic by Warren Ellis in 2014, that's when Mr. Knight took centerfold for the first time with regular Moon Knight still being in the picture. But basically, Mr. Knight was a more refined detective type in the comics. He was someone who would coordinate with local police. And Mr. Knight was much more heroic than simply just a tool for vengeance, okay? So, damn, so many Batman words. It's a wonder why those comparisons are made in the first place. Anyway, because Mr. Knight, who was piloted by Mark Spector in the comics, was never a bit of a dope or a bit silly like we saw with episode two, people are now throwing a fit. Now, I personally love the scene. I'm loving Mr. Knight and the changes they've made to him and Stephen Grant. I think it makes each personality and look and suit very distinct from the others, which personally, the difference in the comics between the suits never seemed that stark to me. And I think Oscar Isaac is so talented that he can do all of this rather superbly, although I still need to get some of my UK homies thoughts on his accent and the slang that he's using, because I don't know what the fuck a wagwan is. But also, I don't want to completely dismiss the criticisms of the character changes that some people have purely because this is the first time we ever see Moon Knight in live action. So it's not like a situation like Batman or Spider-Man where the character has been used before. Moon Knight is completely new to most individuals and there's never been another live action interpretation. So you can really go insanely close to the comics, which anybody who's read will love and not risk treading on ground that's already been tread upon. If Mr. Knight is a representation of growth of Mark's character in the comics, then I'm really looking forward to seeing that growth in real time during the series play out. So that's what I'll say about that. And this whole sequence, I'd imagine, is definitely inspired heavily from From the Dead, where Mr. Knight fights these ghosts and he actually has to get special armor to fight ghosts, which I think is just super badass. Ghosts are way too OP. They have way too much power. They do all this stupid shit. They'll fucking laugh in a corner and clap behind your head and do a bunch of annoying shit. The ghosts, they deserve to catch the hands, okay? So that's what I'll say about that. But we see that Mr. Knight is not quite ready to handle the Jackal, so he gives up control to Mark and thus the Moon Knight comes out and lures the Jackal away from civilians. And it looked fucking awesome, guys. To see Moon Knight climbing, running, and parkouring around London was fucking amazing. The CGI, I think, is awesome here. It really felt for a moment like some Assassin's Creed type shit. And he was able to impale the Jackal rather quickly. And after that, we get this absolutely amazing back and forth between Mark and the now trapped in the mirror of Stephen Grant, who really doesn't like it and wants to make Mark Spector's life a pain, perfectly displaying what the mental battle going on inside the mind looks like on the outside and just a great display of dealing with mental health. Oscar Isaac is so damn good and the motivation behind serving Khonshu continually is pressed to save Lila from becoming Khonshu's avatar. It's such a noble motivation for Mark to have. The dynamic between him and Khonshu also is perfect and the episode ends with a tease of Egypt for the next episode so expect some flashbacks of that fateful night where Mark met Khonshu, a deeper dive into the history and lore of Moon Knight. And if we were ever going to see them, Bushman and Frenchie will appear, okay? But just take note of all the times that Mark, or rather Steven, makes a fool of himself in a public setting, or fights invisible things, or runs away from invisible things that could be potentially in an area where security cameras are, because that'll probably all be used to put him in that psych ward if he's not in there already, okay? Which I really enjoyed from the comics, like especially deeper into Lemire's run. It gets really crazy to distinguish who's who and at what point they are which and transitioning from that so basically i've always been under the impression that jake lockley would be in the show but ever since i've been seeing promos and interviews with oscar isaac and his little character template will always just say mr knight moon knight mark specter stephen grant okay he doesn't ever say that he's gonna play jake lockley but supposedly there's an interview that he does in spanish and he says he's gonna be playing more than two characters okay guys so i'm a 
assuming Jake Lockley will come out and the whole rumor is that he will be in this black and white armored suit which looks super badass and I can't wait to see in live action like an actual real armored suit that's not kind of like gauze because even though the Moon Knight suit looks cool I want some armor okay for Moon Knight especially I think it would look really dope and more looks the better but yeah that's the whole rumor that's going down that Jake Lockley will come out if not then he will eventually come out if they do a season two which supposedly Oscar Isaac is only signed on for one season but we are definitely going to see him in the MCU for a long time he's going to interact with everybody don't worry guys I really enjoyed this episode more than the first episode we get to see kind of what everybody's about and delve deeper into the mind of Mark Spector and Stephen Grant and really explore the dynamics that I think are really interesting let me know what you guys think did you like the episode did you not like it how do you feel about Mr. Knight's portrayal and what do you think is going to happen in the next coming episodes that's it if you like the video leave me a thumbs up comment down below and if you want subscribe i always appreciate it again thank you guys so much for watching hope all of you are well and i'll see you in the next one